My name is Ed, for those of you that don't know me, my talk today is about remote geocoding. Um, okay, so first, for those of you that don't know, but I expect probably everyone who has an interest in remote geocoding knows, geocoding is the process whereby, given some uh, information, a uh, string, usually a uh, place name or something, we turn that into coordinates. Um, so it could be a uh, postcode, it could be a uh, place name, it could be whatever. And we spit out a bunch and bunch of I'm not really going to talk about what is geocoding. I'm going to assume you already know geocoding, uh, the concept of what is geocoding. If you're interested, a colleague of mine actually gave a talk at the London Pro Workshop four years ago about geocoding um, and their URL. These slides will be up later and you can do that. Um, a lot of good resources online about geocoding in general. Okay, so what is remote geocoding? Um, remote geocoding is basically where you hand off your work to someone else and you send your request across the magical internet and they come back with an answer. Um, so that's great because you don't have to do the work yourself, you get the answer from someone else. Um, the problem with remote geocoding is that there are a lot of different people who offer a remote geocoding service. Um, so and this ranges from the big names of the internet, the Googles, um, Bing, or Microsoft, uh, Yahoo, um, MapQuest, which is owned by AOL, um, all the way through to startups like CloudMade. Uh, Simple Geo is a new one in the US that's getting um, a lot of uh, buzz lately. Um, and then, of course, there are actually even open source um, <coughs> services like OpenStreetMap. These are just some. There are a lot of others. Um, so with each one, I've put the relevant, uh, relevant Perl module that you could use. Um, pretty much the naming convention has been geo, colon, colon, coder, colon, colon, name of the service. Uh, the one big exception is CloudMade. Um, I should also say, for some of these, there are multiple modules, um, so people decided they had to reinvent the wheel against each other. Um, but in general, I would recommend you use the geo, colon, colon, coder, colon, colon, service uh, models. But as you can see, there are a lot of different services that you could be using to do remote geo code. Um, each one of those services has a lot of small print attached to it. So typically there are usage restrictions. Um, a lot of them require that you register, that you have some sort of key. Um, and there are limits as to how quickly you can geocode. Um, and of course, each one of these is different. So that's a real pain in the ass, actually. Um, and, and they're not really interchangeable. They're actually uh, quite different in terms of what they do. So, some are very good in certain geographies, um, but very weak elsewhere. Um, some, so some have very different underlying data. So for example, OpenStreetMap is, is based around um, voluntary contributions. So in some areas, like in, in the UK, it, it's, or in central London, it's fantastic. In other parts of the world, it's completely useless. Um, but from a pure technical level, they also have very different input formats that you need to send. Um, different response formats. Um, typically, when you geocode something, you want to not just know a longitude and latitude, but how precise is that answer. Um, so they have very different definitions of precision. Um, and then they're also constantly adjusting and changing, so they have different um, versioning. So Google, for example, um, Google switched from what they call version 2 to version 3 earlier this year, which has a different response format. So, so there are a lot of differences. Um, so we wrote GeoCoder Many, which attempts to uh, do the bridge across these um, different uh, modules. Um, and the, the, what we attempt to do with GeoCoder Many is uh, to have a single interface that allows you to, um, a single interface across all the providers, um, a single definition of precision, so that if I know, you know, I get back an answer and it's a precision of X, uh, I know that what that means regardless of the different providers. Um, it provides some uh, tools like in easy to use caching and failover across different providers. Um, and you can easily set some picker and filter methods. This was based on some feedback that some people had. Um, so I'll go, I'll kind of explain what those mean in, in an example. So let's dive into some code. Um, so this is kind of a, a mythical example. Um, imagine that we have two different geo coder services, one called Locatorize, and one called Where Is It. Um, so these are different services. Uh, so I set up, I use GeoCoder Many. If you want, you can use GeoCoder Many Util, which provides, as I said, some of the, the filters. Um, okay, so the first step is I need to make my GeoCoder Many object. And I, I give it a cache, 
and I can say what type of scheduler I want. So how often do I, how do I want to divide up which, which underlying geocoder I use? In this case, we're going to use a, a weighted round robin. And I create my geocoder many object. There are other schedulers provided by default, and you could also write your own scheduler if you want. Okay, so now, unfortunately, I still have the work of setting up my underlying geocoders. I create a locatorize, you know, give it whatever inputs you need. In this case, let's say you need an app ID. Here we see that locatorize has a daily limit of 2,500 requests. I add that to my geocoder many. I do the same thing with where is it. That has a daily limit of 4,000 requests. So now I'm ready to start um, geocoding. However, I want to um, filter my results. So this is an example of some of the additional features that Geocoder Many lets you do. Um, so let's say I want only results from the United Kingdom. Um, in the UK, we have the problem that uh, because everyone here speaks English, um, a lot of place names are duplicated with other countries like Australia, Canada, the US. Um, so you could say, only, only give me results from the UK. You can also just set a picker callback. So choose of the answers I get that are from the UK, show me only the one give me back only the one that has maximum, the highest precision. Of course, you could also get back all results, all these kinds of different things. So it's quite a flexible tool to um, allow you to filter or select the results. And of course, um, country filter is one of the, the predefined filters. You could also define your own and in your own callback function to, to do whatever you need to do. All right, so I stick in my address as a string, and I get back all these different fields. Um, so most Notable here is you get back a longitude and latitude, of course. Um, you also get back a response code, um, which you can then use to do different, different things with. Um, you also can find out which geocoder was actually used. Um, and behind the scenes, it will do intelligent failover. It will try one. If that doesn't work, it will try the other. Um, and it will try them, of course, according to our weighted round robin uh, distribution. Um, different possible response codes. You can get success, success from the cache. Uh, you know, it might be that all the geocoders weren't able to find the location if you give it, you know, if I give it a string like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, no geocoder is going to find the result for that. Um, or you might hit the limits on how your geocoder is. <laughs> okay, so um, we've made some good progress on geocoder many, but there's still a lot to do. So we'd love it if anyone wants to help out. Um, here's kind of what we're working on. We're, I'm in the process of writing geocoder Google V3. Hope to have that out before Christmas uh, this year. Um, there's, uh, we don't yet support Navtech, CloudMate, or TomTom, um, partially because they just don't really have any need to use them and you have to register and it's kind of complicated, but if someone wanted to, then I would love to have support for that. Um, there are a lot of other country-specific services. So for example, in the UK, um, the Ordnance Survey this year launched a service called uh, OpenSpace. Um, I'm not that familiar with it, with it, but if someone wants to provide support for those, that'd be great. Um, if you're just a user, give us some feedback. Some of the ideas that we've had have come because of feedback, like for example, the callback functions. Uh, we're in the process of moving it to GitHub, and obviously all software could use more tests, so if you have any, um, we'd, love to, we'd love to get your help on that. Um, if you like Geocoder Many, you might also like uh, these different services. One of the main uses of geocoding is to stick a, um, to get a longitude and latitude and stick that on a map. Um, if you're doing that, you're probably interested in Abstraction, which is a um, JavaScript abstraction uh, library. Um, also, if you're interested in really, like, how does geocoding work, uh, you may be interested in the OpenStreetMap uh, geocoding mailing list, where there's uh, an active community of people actually building an actual geocoder. Um, so if, you're, if that interests you, please subscribe and get involved. Um, that's me. Uh, the company I work for is, is Nestoria. But the company is Loki, the brand is Nestoria. Um, we often talk about things related to geocoding. So if you're interested, please, um, please follow us. Uh, we are hiring. And with that, I move on to questions. Anyone? <coughs> All right. I look forward to your patches, though. Thanks.